Are you feeling like a war right now? No, I haven't, I haven't felt like I've There's been no in a war. war but no. there is a war right now. A year of war. A year. A year of war. A year. Oh, We've come to Hertzlia, where the birds sing louder than anywhere else I've heard. Quite a bougie neighbourhood. We're at a radio station. We haven't checked out the radio scene yet. So we're going to go and talk to a guy called Tommy, who runs a show called Jigger Juice. Falafel, 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 falafel. Shuama falafel, shuama falafel, shuama falafel. Falafel, shuama, shuama, falafel, shuama, falafel. Falafel, shuama, shuama, falafel, shuama, falafel. Giga juice. Hazar no. Benny is packing. Okay. I want to thank the good people of Vice Magazine who are in the studio right now documenting what's going on. Getting a taste of the local Israeli scene. Hope you like what you hear. You going Jigger Juice? Nice to meet you, man. You too. So how long has Jigger Juice been going? Almost five years now. Five years. Since we've been here, no one really seems to dislike anyone personally, but it's clear that there are a lot of very diverse opinions in this country. Do you feel like you have to represent the various different opinions? I have my own opinions, but uh, I try to be objective when it comes to the show. That means that if a song is, re is really good, even if I don't agree with it, I would still play it. I try not to discriminate it because, you know, it's not about me, it's about hip hop. Every city has its spot where young hip-hop fans gather. And in Tel Aviv, it's this deserted shopping mall. There's a little recording studio in the depths of it, where a bunch of the Jigger Juice regulars are assembled to record an anthem to celebrate the fifth birthday of the show. When you rap in Hebrew, it's like you're you're rapping in, in, in a language that doesn't have a hip hop legacy. You know, you don't have any of the slang and the and the rhyming words that, that you know you can easily use when you write in English. When you write in Hebrew you're like in uncharted territory. Even in Israel, most people always ask me, why don't you rap in English? When you rap, you gotta rap about like who you are, you know, and talk like what you regularly talk on the street, mm. right? Mm. So that's Hebrew. But in the end, gone. everything it sounds like... <laughs> yeah, and in the end, it just sounds like... <laughs> 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 a bunch of... <laughs> yeah, a bunch that, of... That pretty much sums it up. But yeah. I think <laughs> also, really, Hebrew rap is special, but when I think about Arabic, it's more smooth than Hebrew yeah. in rap. Yeah. yeah, I can really hear it. We yeah. don't know if Hebrew rap is really going to make it around the world. We're more it's focused not. about making it here first, yeah. getting it, getting the Israeli ear used to it. Talking to these lads about rapping in Hebrew inevitably led to one mythical guy, Subliminal, the first Israeli to really achieve commercial success as a rapper. Yeah. Over 40,000 copies, so it's real. He's the reason, like, I thought you yeah. But your children of Subliminal. Yeah, like a, a pure hip hop vibe, like Brooklyn sound, but Israeli style. <laughs> Driving to his compound, we stuck in the CD compilation of the staggering 40 number ones he's had over here. 
According to the Jigga Juice guys, he's more of a pop star these days and they might be uncomfortable with some of his political views, but they still pay respect to the ambition he had from the start and the foundations he laid for them. This studio really created Israeli hip hop the way people know it. As a producer, I produced more than 30 albums and we recorded everybody and his mama in the studio. It's been closed for three years, but now we're bringing everything up and I'm coming back in the game. International. This is the big album. This is actually yeah. the Light and the Shadow album. You see, we take the, the Jewish star out of the dirt. I became so big, I'm actually a pop artist in Israel way bigger than hip hop. And I guess if you talk to the hip hop fans right now, in this point of time, they'll tell you, look, Subliminal left us, he's doing this dance music now. But I'm not trying to do what the crowd thinks I should do because that would be the end of me. Since you've opened the doors again, compared to say when you built the studio, what do you think has changed? When I really became famous in Israel was when I was released out of the army in the year 2000 and released my first album, The Light From Zion which is actually the kind of cornerstone of hip hop in Hebrew. I think we were kind of ahead of our time. When we released this first album, it was like an earthquake in Israel, not only because it was hip hop and it was Hebrew and it was successful, it was an earthquake in fashion, like clothing and, and, and jewelry and just the fact like Magen David, the Jewish star, nobody used to rock it back in the days. Everybody went uh, like with the anarchy logo. Yeah and especially oh, iced out as well especially iced out so when it was cool to not rock the star was that a more hopeful time no because when we brought the star back into the light people got their hopes again you can make peace and be against war and love your country and be a patriot and help make it a better place and fight for it and build your home we need pro-israeli people positive we have the Israeli Defense Force, for example. It's the Israeli Defense Force. I know in London, a lot of people see it as like the Israeli Occupation Force, but people need to stop and think for one minute. If we were on a war state of mind, not a defenseful state of mind, but a war state of mind, we can wipe them out so easily. It's not even a big deal but it's killing a whole lot of innocent people that are brainwashed and don't know what they're even saying. We just want to defend our borders and stay alive. My generation won't uh, stand around and, and, and get slaughtered like that again. We've been talking about music and, and clearly we're straight into politics. Was it possible back then to make rap without it being political? And is it possible Hell now? No. Was it Hell possible no. now for it to not be political? No. In every normal country in the world that is not in a constant war for survival, it's possible. You can be a musician and deal with music and fashion and live your life like everything is cool. Are you feeling like a war right now? Now you've been in Israel, you've been touring, you went probably to the sea, you met people, you saw no, shows. No, I, I haven't felt like I've There's been There's no war world. going on, right? But no. there is a war right now yeah. going on all over Israel borders. And the people from age 17 to 20 are doing their job taking care of it and keeping it away from yeah. us. So we can be musicians. People in the UK are brainwashed by propaganda. They're clearly ignorant about the situation. Gaza Strip, for example, can be heaven. It got a long coast, white sand. It's really the center of Israel and Egypt, and it can be heaven. It can be Las Vegas, mm. okay? But they are wow. interested only in killing us. Their fight for independence, I can understand that, but mm. I cannot understand that if it means that I should die for yeah. it. It seems very straightforward for me when you talk about your external borders, but what about the situations in the country? Perhaps we're brainwashed, but that's what um, people in London are more concerned about. Those uh, neighborhoods and cities that's populated with Arabic people inside of Israel are actually the border with the countries out of Israel. 
So actually, if we're backing out from there, the terrorist organizations can easily go so close to us that they're actually here, like 10 minutes from here. I mean, one single hit can be devastating yeah. for the Jewish people of Israel. Yeah. Clearly, you feel like if other people don't want to talk, then we have to defend ourselves. 90% of my songs is talking about peace. There's a lot of crazy people in Israel too, and they can take me, them saying I'm pro-Israeli, I have all these Jewish stars on me, and I'm, we are the defensive force. And some crazy people can take that and say, let's kill all the Arabs. We hate Arabs. This is really not my agenda, not my point of view. I hate that. A guy like me can educate them because they look at me like I'm, I'm one from their camp. Politics and all that Israeli situation is so into everybody's heart. Yeah. So if you disconnect yourself from the situation and you don't have an agenda, mm. then you're not a real person. You're, you're made from plastic. Like, who are you? Yeah, People yeah. suspect you, yeah. you know? You're not drinking, you're spying. That's what the, I the guess. Polish I say. Guess. That's what the Polish say. <laughs> and it's a big problem from the, at weddings, you know? It goes like this. מה קורה? זהו זה. שוב אני קורא, אחי, שחור פחם underground. קרא לי הקורא, אחי. טאג טים. מובילים לעיתים, שרוב הראפרים לעיתים מובילים רהיטים. מי זה מלך יהודי לפני דרייק? ילד במולי, אתה נופל בוואן טייק? דרק. פתחתי דף חלק או צוחק? כולכם פתחתם דף חדש והוא נשאר רייק? פייק? מקדיש מכל הלב את היצירה שלי לאור שלי. זה פשוט וקל כי נוח לי באור שלי. זה הזמן ש... שלי בחודש המחזור שלי, כולכם לא שווים אחוז מהמחזור שלי, מין מצע מין, היום אני מבין, ממרחם על אכזרים, מתאכזר לטובים, כי הדרך לגן עדן פאקינג תוהו ובוהו, כל מחריבייך מהרסייך מקרבייך יבואו, בואו! Honestly, I was not trying to make these interviews heavy. He started it. What is clear though, is that despite Subliminal's huge commercial success, he's not content to just move to LA and do yoga. He is extremely passionate about sticking up for his country against what he feels is an unwarranted groundswell of criticism from the international community. And by the way, respect for calling the album Juniversal. Yeah, you are the first Palestinian Arab Middle East sex symbol. This is the pimp of the hood. Yeah. This is the Hugh Hefner of the It's the Hugh Hefner. Hefner, yeah. I think all the gangster rappers should go to the West Bank in Gaza. They're gonna see the, the true OGs over there. <laughs> 